So in this video, I'll be talking about specific applications, areas where we can apply data science or artificial intelligence to the industry. <laughs> guys you are welcome to the part two of this video applying data sciences to the energy industry and in part one i've covered the importance of applying this and an overview of the energy industry in case you missed that i'm going to put a link to the end of this video so that you could go watch it so that you can follow through on this video like you can see on your screen we have different energy sources within the industry and different subsets so we have solar wind geothermal, carbon capture and storage, fossil fuels, we have environmental. So I'll just talk about the different processes and which of these energy sources they relate to. So the first is forecasting weather climate conditions or climatic conditions. This is applicable in the solar industry or the wind industry. Like you are aware, we need sun for solar energy and we need wind for wind energy. So we machine learning, we are able to predict uh, weather conditions you know, when we have sun or when we have wind. Secondly, we have multivariate analysis. Within the industry, we have lots of these, most of, lots of features or variables we are trying to analyze with machine learning. We can optimally analyze this data set with optimizing both time and cost. Also, machine learning can help locate our facilities or optimally place our facilities or in the best location so this is applicable to almost everything we have here but also with machine learning we can carry out predictive maintenance of our facilities so most of the this industry involves location or building of facilities with machine and these facilities need regular maintenance so rather than waiting for those facilities to break down or fail we can predict when net or when a, an equipment is to fail and appropriately and do this so that it doesn't affect our production next we have environment controlling hazard control soil and water pro pollution natural disaster and environmental monitoring machine learning or artificial intelligence can help and do some of those things so our waste from our, our, our different resources to know how to properly dispose them and predict the contamination on water or soil around so machine learning can also help with surface analysis it can help with geological mapping satellite imagery or remote sensing we have lots of satellite images we can use machine learning to analyze these images to detect different things and can be used for different fields i don't want to go into details for that finally you can also use machine learning for subsurface analysis for fluid flow reservoir estimation or uncertainty analysis i'll be talking more about that on my next slide so for the subsurface analysis machine learning or artificial intelligence can be used to evaluate our subsurface geology subsurface basin our petroleum systems and can be used for reservoir models this has been if you look at this paper you this they successfully carry, carried out reservoir modeling and simulation using artificial intelligence deep learning so some of the different subsurface analysis that we can carry out includes um, delineating reservoir structure like there are machine learning models that can predict or interpret fault from seismic data or structure from our seismic data you could also use machine learning for reservoir characterization you could use it for well log interpretation lithology prediction little flashes identification or even reservoir petrophysical evaluation like porosity permeability or water saturation you could use machine learning to analyze your core photographs and to do a lot of things next we have drilling we have most automated drilling so it's governed by artificial intelligence we could use machine learning to pinpoint exactly where to drill at the optimal point structure in our reservoir and the best safe best place to drill safely you can also predict um, hazards within our drilling rigs we could use machine learning to predict hazards and prevent them machine learning can be used for reservoir management so you are able to carry out our traditional 
um, simulations we speed it up with using ai we could also use ai to maintain our reservoir to understand how the reservoir changes over time carrying out multiple simulations finally we could also use machine learning for production so you monitor your production wells monitor when maybe your production well is to fill areas that are performing optimally can predict or at what point you have reduction in performance of your well if you have issues with your tubings you could also use machine learning to locate where we have those problems so lastly machine learning like artificial intelligence is very useful in the industry and we should encourage applying this to help optimize our processes like the machine learning is not here or artificial intelligence is not here to replace human like it's not possible it's just here to help optimize our processes and extract more information from whatever we're doing i will end by talking about the challenges of applying machine learning to the energy industry so i'll be talking about the challenges as well as the mitigation how to handle these challenges first of all we have data availability this is like one of the biggest problem we are currently facing with applying machine learning to the applying machine learning to the energy industry we don't really have enough labeled data sets for machine for to carry out machine learning application you need to train your data so we need labeled data to be able to train our machine learning model so we don't have enough of this so as a mitigation Aside from having liberal data, we don't really have enough data available to the public. So as a mitigation to this, we need more data engineers, geoscientists, data, geoscience data engineers, so people that understand this data and can understand how to transform this data to best suit our objectives. Also, we encourage collaborations between companies because different companies house different kind of data. So if we are able to collaborate and build a large database or large data warehouse where we can deploy all these different data for machine learning and artificial intelligence it would be a valuable tool our next problem is ill poised problem agile science data is complicated and they are all related in a complicated fashion that if poised problem we have multi-scale heterogeneity an interesting characteristics of geoscience process is their degree of variability in time and space, leading to rich heterogeneity in geoscience data across different areas. For example, due to, due to the presence of varying geographies, vegetation type, rock formations, and climatic conditions in different regions of the Earth, the characteristics of geoscience variables vary significantly from one location to another in both time and space. The Earth is not stationary, it's dynamic and goes through different cycles and has seasonal changes through geologic timescales, for example, polarity reversal and sea level changes. This heterogeneity of geoscience processes makes it difficult to study the joint distribution of geoscience variables across different points in space. Hence, it is difficult to train machine learning models that have good performance across all regions and across different time steps. So instead, we try to build models for local areas within a particular time and this can be somewhat complex. Also, we have multi-resolution data like geoscience data. There are different methods of um, acquiring geoscience data and these have different skills different accuracy different sampling rate and speed or sample size and this creates uncertainty to our data set so it also affects our machine learning or artificial intelligence model because the quality of your data determines the quality of your output on that finally on that ill poised problem we have the descriptive nature of our geosciences geosciences are it's a very descriptive science and we have more process based models so converting this to a machine learning readable format could be somewhat difficult. So as a mitigation to this, we encourage geoscientists to go into machine learning and artificial intelligence because they understand data, they understand the objective, they understand the challenges, we understand the uncertainties associated with this data set. So we are properly able to condition our model to suit our desired objectives. 
Then the final challenge I want to address is poor industry perception. Within the industry, we already have well-established principles, workflow, methodology, and as humans, we are generally resistant to change. So within the industry, there has not been this large reception of machine learning because other methods are already tried and trusted. They've been tested and proven to work. So there is this resistance to want to go into machine learning. As a mitigation to this, we need, just need to create awareness. We need more geoscientists to also come into this space. People that already understand this workflow, established workflow, to see how artificial intelligence can help improve that. So we are machine learning or artificial intelligence is not here to replace the, what is already existing. It's only here to just enhance and improve what we already have to make optimal use of the data set and the methods we already have. I hope you've been able to learn one or two things from this video. Let me get your comment. I would like to hear from you what you think, what are the challenges, or have you experienced any of the challenges in your offices, or what do you think in general about applying artificial intelligence to the energy industry? If you have any questions, please also include it in the comment section. I would like to hear from you. In my next video, I'll be talking about the data workflow and the different job roles within the data space. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.